Oh, hi once again everybody. Welcome to my latest YouTube video. In this video, I'm going to repair an all-in-one PC from Hewlett Packard. Now, I may have mentioned this in one of my previous videos. It was given to me by a customer of my son's who originally wanted the recovery of data when they bought a new PC. Unfortunately, it appears that the hard drive has crashed. So in this video, I'm going to pull the hard drive out, double check to make sure it has crashed, which I believe it has, and then return it to the customer, the hard drive that is. I'm then gonna go ahead and replace that crashed hard drive with a solid state drive. A little bit smaller in size, but I don't need one that big for that PC. Just gonna use it as an extra PC around the house here. So hopefully you get something out of this video. If you do, please subscribe to my channel. Here's the actual all-in-one HP PC that we were given. And I already tried it once, but let me show you what it's doing. And I'll show you what else I've noticed too when we go into the BIOS. If I turn it on by hitting the switch over in the side here. Okay, interest screen. Wait long enough, I hear the DVD doing something. And there you go. And as you can see by this screen, it doesn't see a boot drive at all. According to the specs on this system, it's supposed to have a one terabyte hard disk in it. Now it didn't say what size it was, so we'll see what it looks like. I mean, physical, what size, whether it's two and a half or three and a half. I can't imagine them putting a three and a half inch drive in one of these all at once, but we'll see what we get. So now let me try turning it off and then back on again. This time I'll try to get into the BIOS. I believe it said the BIOS was an F10. So let me get ready for that and turn it on again. Get F10. Okay, it says it's entering setup. Let's see what we look like when we go into the setup here. Okay, it says it has four gig of memory. According to the specs, it can support up to eight. So if this works out, I might upgrade it. It has two, two gig memory sticks in it. They're DDR3 as far as the specs go that I found online at the Hewlett Packard website. There's no floppy installed and there's no first drive installed. So it does not see a hard drive at all. It does see the second drive, which is the DVD player, but it does not see the first drive, no hard drive. Let me take a look at advanced, see if I see anything else here. It's an old BIOS. Matter of fact, it has a date on it of 2010. So I'm not sure if this could be updated or not. I didn't notice that, but that's one thing I'll do when I can, once we have an operating system running this thing again. Boot drive priority. It's been a while since I used one of these. So it's set up to first try to CD, then try to hard drive group, then a floppy, and then network, but network is disabled for booting purposes. And it says here, hard drive group not installed. So there's no floppy. There's no hard drive, there is only a DVD and a network, which I have it disabled right now. What if I go down to that and see what it looks like if I have a choice here? Oh, it has a real tech. So that actually may try to boot off the network. I'll leave it disabled for now. Okay, let me uh, open it up and see what we got. Okay, I have it all set up to try to take it apart. According to the instructions, I have to take a screw off of this and then this should just slide back and that should give me access to the hard drive and to the memory so when i upgrade the memory it'll be the same deal let me see what kind of screw that has it's got a flathead screw but it also looks like it has uh, those special wrench heads too let me take this one screw out there we go magnetic screwdriver helps and this then should according to the instructions just fly forward as such. So here's the memory. The memory says I just have to pull this up. Whoop, there it is. So this little pan comes off and the memory you have access to. I don't want to play with that right now. I don't want to introduce too many variables. Put that back. The hard drive. Does this, oh it's got a screw here. Wait a second. That's right. The instructions did say there was one screw that held in the hard drive. Oh it's a trap screw. Does this come out? No it doesn't. This is in the way. Looks like it has four screws holding it. That fifth one is not part of that bracket. Let me take out those four screws. Picture it 
picture showing that. Yeah, this whole thing comes off with that bracket. So this whole piece comes off. Put that off to the side here. Now I should be able to pull this cage out. Yep. Well, the cables are attached in the back. Get the cables off of here. Got the combined SATA power and SATA data in one connector here. Okay. And then we have the hard drive and it is a three and a half inch. Wow. So I'm going to need to use an adapter. I already bought a solid state hard disk, not as big as this, only 500 gigabytes, but it should be more than enough for what I need to use this computer for. So I will have to put a bracket in here. Hopefully I got the right one. In the meanwhile, let me get all these screws off. Oh, that's a Phillips now. Okay, they're switching on me. This is a standard Phillips screwdriver. It's got some kind of cushion here. I guess that's a vibration cushion. So I want to test this drive independently right now. That's why I'm taking it out of its bracket. I have a little device that I have that'll help me connect it up to my other computer and see if it actually is dead. If this is dead, the owner, the former owner of this computer would like it back. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to give it to them. I have a shipping box for it. I already told them that seemed like the hard drive crash. I gave them the various websites you can go to to try to get recovery of it. And if they can recover it, that'd be great. If not, well, nothing you can do. They may lose some, I think it's mostly pictures on here that they were worried about. They did have an external drive that was used as backup. However, that uh, external drive had gotten full a while back. They wound up losing some data, even from that backup. So let me, uh, Put this aside and get this out of the way for now. Okay, what I have here is a hard drive docking station. This one is from a thermal take and it's called the Black Widow. And it supports not just uh, SATA drives, but, well, it supports all SATA drives, but it also has different connectivity to the PC. You could connect either through the USB or you can actually use an eSATA, which I actually have on my engineering workstation. So I can go either way and see if this works. It also supports two and a half. You just push it right into this opening here. And if you have a three and a half, this little window, this little window moves out of the way and allows you to put a three and a half inch drive in there. And it has its own power supply. So that's good. It doesn't draw power from the PC. So I'm going to hook this up to the PC now and we'll see if this drive is in fact dead. Okay, I've put the hard drive inside of the docking station, this Black Widow, and now I'm going to plug it into my USB port on my computer. I'm going to turn it on. I hear it doing something. It's showing a blue and a red light simultaneously. The red light is blinking, making a lot of noise. I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone or not. Let me see if I can open up this drive and see if it sees it. It should be loaded as one of these. No, I don't see it showing up here. Hmm. Let me try another known good drive and see if that works. Okay, what I have here is a 500 gigabyte, three and a half inch hard drive that I took out of my really old engineering workstation. So let me turn this one off, take this drive out and I'll put the other one in and see if it shows up. I think I got it in there now. Turn this on. Now it sounds like it's actually cycling up. The other one did not sound like it was cycling it up at all. Oh, and we have it. As you can see here, it shows drive N. It only shows it's 225. I may have had that partitioned, so I may have only been using half of it. Let me open it up and see what it looks like. Yeah, all it has on it is some back backups. It's good enough, it sees the drive, which is something that the other one did not see. So what I have on here is a full backup of my den. That's all I have on here right now, using a Cronus, it looks like. But it definitely sees the drive. Okay, that I guess that sort of proves it, that uh, this, uh, this drive is dead. I'll try it one more time. Shut this one down. Take it out. Load the other one back into the stocking station. Turn this one on. I don't even hear this one cycling up. The heads are making noise. The two lights lit up. 
whereas the other one went completely blue. This one is still blinking red. There's nothing that shows up here. Okay, so that drive is definitely crashed. So let me replace it and hopefully that PC will recognize my new solid state drive. Okay, so what I have here is a 480 gig solid state hard drive, two and a half inch, a hard disk to SSD mounting kit. So hopefully this will work okay with this bracket that has to go back into the PC. Okay, so I first gotta mount the drive inside of this. Make sure that the connector is the right way. It looks like it goes this way so that I can get to the cable connectors over here on this side. Okay, it's back again. So let me get the new cage that I created with the solid state drive in it. The connectors are oriented right. So I've got to maneuver this in here and get those connectors on. Let me do it this way and I can flip it. So let me get it in here, in there, and then I can flip it back over again. Make sure the connector is in all the way. Push it in to there. I've got to get this screw on. Not too tight. Then I got to get this back piece back on again. Put this plate back. Being ambitious here, being very positive thinking. Okay, so that's in. Let me get that last screw in. Start it by hand again. Do I have to? Well, at least I have to lay it in there. Let me reset it. Make sure that uh, it works. Okay, let's see what happens when I turn this thing on. I want to get ready to hit the F10. Let's see what we see. It's going in the setup. And we're there. We're actually inside the BIOS. So, does it see it? Okay, it still thinks a hard drive is not installed. Let me exit out of this. It doesn't see the boot. Okay. Let me go ahead and load Windows and see what happens. Now, unfortunately, this one I have to install Windows using a CD. The system does not support booting from a USB. I did try it, but it doesn't work. So the BIOS is just too old for that. So what I have here is a Windows 10 on a CD, and I'm gonna try booting that and see what it does. Get it in, Let's see if it boots up. Hit any key, I hear it moving, I hear it cranking. Oh, it's doing something. Okay, it finally came up. Uh, took a while, took about eight or nine minutes before this thing actually came up. So let me see if I can actually get this thing to see the hard drive. Not a good sign that the BIOS didn't see it, but I have seen that happen before. So I'll say no, no product key. I'll go ahead and run. I have a couple of licenses left for that, just in case. Going through the basic Windows 10 install steps is just a lot slower because it's coming off of a CD. Got to accept the terms. Do a custom. It does not see it. Voila! So first the drive is not recognized properly, and now it is. Well, I can't leave it that way. While the camera was off, I actually had to troubleshoot this. The drive was not being recognized. After some investigation, it turned out I had to initialize the solid state drive first. So I connected it up through the USB, that same Thermaltake Black Widow drive tester, connected it up to my other PC, and I was able to initialize it there. And once initialized, I put it back in here and now it's being seen. Let me go ahead now and say next. It should use up all the space and now it's going to copy over. So this is gonna take a while, so I will jump ahead and you will see, hopefully, Windows up and running very shortly. Well, you know, that's faster than I thought it was gonna be. I've installed through a CD many times in the past and it usually was terribly slow, but I guess because the destination drive is a solid state drive, this probably took about only one quarter of the time that I thought. 
So in about 15 minutes, it has completely installed Windows, and now it's initializing it. So uh, th it is working well. It's already rebooted. I've already uh, taken the CD out just to make sure it would boot off of the existing solid state. It's doing well. I'll wait till Windows is up again. Okay, Windows is completely up at this point. I went ahead and checked to see if the Windows automatically activated. Now I loaded Windows Professional on this one, so maybe I picked the wrong one. I may redo it, or I'd rather use Professional. I really don't want to have um, Windows Home because I'm going to be setting up my own uh, authentication server that'll you know, require Windows Professional to connect to it. I'll have to use one of my licenses if I decide to keep this thing around. Yet to be determined. I may just let it run without a license for a while, which is fine. I'll be missing a couple of the advanced features of Windows in terms of administrative tools, but other than that, it should work fine. So with that, I think this uh, worked out well. I've gone ahead and ordered the memory. Sometime in the next couple of days, I'll be upgrading the memory from the four gig that it currently has to the maximum that it can support which is 8 gig. Well, that concludes this video on repairing that Yielder Packard all-in-one PC. It was interesting, wasn't it? And it works just fine. It'll be useful. I'll have an extra one around the house, maybe do some experiments with it as needed, but it helps. If you got something out of this video or enjoyed it in any way, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. It would really help us a lot. My head will pop up here in a moment. Just click on it follow along and subscribe. There is no charge from YouTube for subscribing to a channel. Thanks for watching and until the next time. <laughs>